Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Giselle Mills. For those of you who are new, welcome. And welcome back to my subscribers. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the very basics on how to outline a novel. As some of you may know, National Novel Writing Month, which is NaNoWriMo, is just around the corner next month in November. If you are participating in NaNoWriMo for the first time, like I am, and you've never written a novel, this video may be helpful for you. Now, as I have written a novel before, and several others which are yet to be published, but my first novel was published, I wanted to help you guys out and give you some tips just in case you're not sure as to how you go about writing a novel in the first place. So this video will be about the basic, basic aspects of outlining a novel. So let's begin. Now, first of all, in order to outline your novel, you need to know what you're going to be writing about. So step number one, is to come up with an idea for your novel. You need to have a general idea as to what your story is going to be about. If you guys need help on how to create or come up with ideas for novels, just let me know in the comments below and maybe I'll do a separate video on that as well. Now, let's assume that you have come up with your idea for your novel. So what do we do next? Well, we need to know more about this novel idea. We need to know, for example, what is the genre of your novel? For example, is it a historical fiction novel? Is it fantasy? Is it drama? Is it contemporary, science fiction, and so many other genres out there? So you need to identify what genre or category of story you are planning to write about. And of course, you don't have to just stick to one, but whatever it is, I would recommend if it's your first novel, Try to stick with one so it could be easier for you to expand on the plot and not confuse yourself along the way. And of course, you always have to think about marketing in the event that you plan to publish your story. You need to write in a genre which is capable of being marketed. Next, after you identify your genre, you need to think about who are you writing for? Who is your target audience? Are you writing for younger audiences? Is it middle grade? Is it young adult? Is it new adult or just adult in general? Identifying your target audience would definitely help in how you structure your story, how long your story is going to be, and what themes, what content you plan to put into this novel. If this is just an experimental novel, don't feel burdened by all the rules on how long your novel should be or how short. And of course, the length of your story could always be adjusted when it's time to edit. At this point, you may have ideas for the name of your story, but it's quite okay if you don't have any clue as to what you're going to name your story at this point. But I would advise that you at least have a few names that you're planning to consider or have a working title at least. But I don't want to go into too much detail on naming a story in this video because I'm just giving you guys the basics on how you outline your story. Next, once you have your idea and the basic background as to what kind of story you're going to write, you need to start thinking about your characters. Who is your main character? Do you have more than one main character? And who are your secondary characters? And how do they relate to each other? At this point, what I like to do is to create what I call a character sketch, or some people call it character profiles. So I would create a document on my laptop or sometimes in a notebook and I describe my character as much as possible. In the beginning, I just put the basics like what the character looks like, of course, their name, where they live, their age, who their family is, their personality. So I include the very basics in my character profiles. And of course, the main characters get even more detailed profiles. I could do a separate video on how detailed I get into my character descriptions, if you would like. But for now, what I would suggest is just to make sure you know the basics of who your characters are. You should think of them as real people and describe them like how you would describe someone that you know. Next, I would identify what is the purpose of your story. Why are you writing this story? Do you plan to have some kind of message portrayed in your story? Do you plan to include themes? What themes are you trying to portray? Is it a good versus evil story? Is it a love story? Is it a character driven story? Is it a plot based story? Does your main character learn some kind of lesson in the end? And what is that lesson? You should think about all of this. So it would help you guide the, the plotting of your story. Additionally, if you're writing a story which requires a lot of research, at this point, 
I usually jot down what is the research that I need to do or have a basic idea as to what I don't know which I would like to include in the story. Next. I would want to make sure I know how my story ends. Even if you're not sure how it begins, I think it's very important that you know how it ends. You don't want to start your story and just be wandering and lost and all kind of different things happen which are not related. And then you don't know how to end your story. To me, I find it much easier to have an idea of where your characters are gonna go, what's gonna happen to them when you reach the end, and even knowing the end sometimes could help you work backwards so that you could fill in things in the middle or even the very beginning. Now related to this, I would normally consider if I'm writing a standalone novel, depending on how it ends of course, and also depending on how much information and content you write or you're planning to write, whether it's just one novel or you're planning to write sequels. So it's very important, I think, to know this up front before you start writing. But hey, you know, sometimes when you're actually in the writing process, you might come up with even more ideas and subplots which make you change your mind if you only wanted to write a standalone novel. And by the time you reach halfway through or even near the end, you realize, hey, you know, this could lead to a sequel and that's perfectly okay. Next, so we've just finished dealing with the preliminary aspects of outlining the novel. Now we have to reach the meat, the very core of the book. So it's time to outline the beginning, the middle, and the end. Now I could go into more detail about how you outline the very content of your novel, but that will be for a separate video. Now the beginning of your novel, typically, this is where you introduce your main character, or if you have more than one main character, you introduce them. Your beginning could be a few chapters, it could be several chapters, it could be one chapter. It all depends on how you plan to structure your story and how much content, of course, you plan to include in your novel. The beginning of your novel also would have background information as to your characters, as to your plot, it introduces the setting of your story. We also see more information on secondary or minor characters. And this is where authors tend to foreshadow any potential conflict. Now, such conflict is normally internal or external. And of course, it's always great to include both types of conflicts. Conflicts between the character, the main character and themselves, what emotional issues challenge them, as well as the issues that they face interpersonally with other characters in the story. Now this conflict is what will drive your novel and take it through to the next stage which is the middle and then on towards the end. So as you're wrapping up the beginning section of your novel, this is where you tend to see what is known as the rising action. So you have the introduction of the main conflict and that tends to give the story the bit of gas or the fuel to get it going. Now we reach the middle of your story. This is usually the part which has the most amount of content. This is where you have all the action happening. And this usually spans across several chapters of your book. So in the middle of your story, this is where you magnify and build upon the conflict which was introduced in the beginning of your story. So we see more action or more drama, more issues. This is where you could also introduce more subplots, which are, you know, smaller plots which are relevant to the main plot, but they also help to create more intrigue and interest in the story. And of course, they help to develop the main character. You either twist them, turn them, change them for the better or for the worse, according to, of course, what you want your main character to become. Now, the middle section of your story also includes what is known by most authors and those in the writing community as the climax or the crescendo, the very highest point in which all the action comes to a peak. You know, like a wave. I like to think about the writing process like a wave. You start off very slow, calm, see? Then you have your rise in action. And then all the action starts to build up, build up, build up, build up until you reach the very top, the crest of the wave, where the characters, they can't take any more pressure. Otherwise, you know, they might explode. So that is the climax. That is where all the action builds up to a head, builds up to a boiling point. Once your action reaches that top point where there's no point of return, this is where the falling action in your story begins to happen. So your wave begins to crash down now, where you now lead to the resolution. What your characters do, or your main characters do, in order to overcome the conflict which they have been facing throughout your novel. 
now we are at the ending point. So we're at that point where the wave is falling and getting smaller and smaller and heading towards the shore, heading towards land and safety. And that shore is your ending point. So with the end of your story, we have what is known as conflict resolution. This is where you tie up all the loose points, you tie up the subplots, you tie up the main conflict, and you show how, what the character does in order to overcome the adversities, the toils, the turmoils, everything they have been facing throughout your novel. Usually we see some sort of character development at this point, some kind of growth because of the problems and the challenges that your characters have faced throughout the story. Now it's not necessary to have a big amount of growth. It could be done in just a few minor ways. Maybe your character was impatient in the beginning and he or she learns a bit of patience and tolerance or whatever it is that they learn. You need to be able to see some kind of change in their personality and usually for the better. Well, of course, it's your story. You could choose to make your character worse off in the end, but think about how it would affect your reader and what you want your readers to take away at the end of your novel. And once you reach the end, it should be concluded in a way which satisfies both yourself as the author and the majority of your readers. And the end of your story is where you either end it completely if it's a standalone novel or you set it up for a sequel. So maybe you introduce a new sort of subplot at the end, which will be the perfect point to stop and then to start your new novel, which will be the sequel, which picks up from your original novel. So don't end your novel on a cliffhanger unless you're planning to write sequels. So there we have it, guys. Those were my tips, my advice on the basics on how you outline a novel. I hope you found those very useful. If you guys have any questions, if you want more advice on any of the things I've discussed in this video or anything at all on writing, please let me know. Just comment down below and I'll see how best I can address your questions. So guys, thank you so much for watching and I wish you all the best and all the luck in the world in writing your new project. And feel free to contact me if you'd like any motivation, any help along the way. I'd love to know how you guys are going with your writing. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. I'd love for you to join my community. You can also feel free to follow me on my various social media accounts. I'm very active on Twitter. I'm at Giselle underscore Mills. And I also have a website, which is GiselleMillsBooks.com. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you in my next video. All the best with your writing. Bye.